High school teacher Tara Faye Grinstead vanished from her Georgia home in October of 2005. The scene in Tara's house was was ambiguous to us. We did not know if a struggle had occurred there or not. I don't know. The popular educator, also a former beauty pageant contestant, lived alone in the town of Osceola, about 200 miles south of Atlanta. Her disappearance alarmed friends and baffled investigators. We needed more information because we had a situation in which many people had been in the residence that day and also several persons had been in the residence before law enforcement arrived. The search for clues into Tara Grinstead's whereabouts would last for more than a decade. A billboard with her photo and tip line number loomed for years in the area, along with hopes she would be found. Hundreds of people were interviewed, but leads dried up and the case went cold. You're convinced you will find her? I am convinced we will, one way or the other. Then in February 2017, more than 10 years after the 30-year-old disappeared, police arrested Ryan Duke and charged him with burglary, aggravated assault, murder, and concealment of a body. Not long after Ryan's arrest, police brought charges against his friend, Bo Dukes. The two were former students at the high school where Grinstead taught. They were part of the graduating class of 2002. Their names were similar but spelled differently. It was more than their names that bonded them together. Ryan and Bo shared a secret, and Bo kept that secret for years until he told it to Ryan's brother at a party. He said that he knew who had killed Tara Grinstead and I said, who? And he said, your brother. That is Stephen Duke, Ryan's brother, testifying at the trial of Bo Dukes in 2019. I asked him, kind of shocked, what do you mean? And he said, your brother killed her. I said, are you serious? He said, no, I'm just playing. Don't tell anybody. But Bo wasn't joking when he confessed to investigators that Ryan allegedly told him he broke into Grinstead's home to rob her for drug money, but ended up strangling her. Grinstead's body has never been recovered, but Bo's confession helped crack the case. Bo said he helped Ryan move Grinstead's body from a large pecan orchard where Duke had dumped the body to a nearby pine grove. Bo then assisted Ryan in burning the body. Bo was convicted for his role in the crime. The jury found him guilty of concealing Grinstead's death and lying to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. He was sentenced to serve 25 years in prison. It's not clear if he will turn state's evidence against his friend Ryan when he's tried for Grinstead's murder. Ryan has pled not guilty and maintains his innocence. All right, let's bring back in our think tank and, and work our way through this mess. I mean, this is not an easy case for prosecutors, um, but they convicted Bo Dukes. Uh, uh, and, and Michael, they convict Bo Dukes through the testimony of Stephen Duke, Ryan Duke's brother, um, but I think to get Ryan Duke, Bo Dukes has to testify. I think that's the only way. Yeah, I, I think so, Vinny. Uh, I think you can expect there to be some sort of negotiation with uh, Bo's lawyers in terms of getting him to become a state's witness because you don't get Ryan without Bo. Uh, Bo was, was case was a little bit more clear cut for prosecutors because they had a confession, uh, because they had him admitting to guilt, because they had him admitting to moving the body. He wasn't convicted of the murder, but he was convicted of four other uh, crimes in, in relationship to helping to conceal the murder, to moving the body, and got 25 years in prison. So you can anticipate there to be some sort of negotiation with prosecutors to reduce that sentence in exchange for his testimony against Ryan. Yeah, and you've got to convince the jury beyond a reasonable doubt. Is anyone going to believe Bo Dukes beyond a reasonable doubt? That's that's the problem that that I, I, that I see for prosecutors here. Well, I know, and if he's he's the sole witness, you know, that then they've got a problem. I mean, it, why would you believe him? Is he, is he lying now? Is he lying then? Or is he just a habitual, contemptible liar? To quote witness for the prosecution, the movie. But I don't know how they do it. It's their only choice, I think, as Michael said, but I don't know how they're going to prevail. 
All right, Michael, you're, you're in metro Atlanta area. Have you ever tried any cases down in Osceola? Have you been down there? I, my understanding is it's a real small town. It is a real small town, Vinny. It's about 200 miles south of Atlanta. I've not had the opportunity to try any cases uh, down there, but I do have friends who try cases in South Georgia all the time. You can expect a more rural jury, uh, individuals who show up regularly, who really care about their community, who are very involved in their community, uh, people who know a lot about the folks who are involved in this uh, potentially. And obviously we're gonna have to try and set those biases aside, but it's a small town, it's a small community. People, almost everyone knows everybody. There's some you know, second, third or fourth degree of separation between individuals individuals. So you can expect you can expect a really small town juror who's probably uh, probably familiar, uh, at least in some respects with this case and the coverage of it. Uh, you know, you can expect a change of venue motion if it hasn't already been filed. Uh, so so, yeah, I, I've not tried any cases, but I have uh, friends, Vinny, who try cases in South Georgia and those juries are, are very knowledgeable uh, and, and, and care a lot about keeping their community safe. Uh, and care a lot about, uh, uh, you know, cases like this and take their jury duty seriously. You know, and you think of Tara Grinstead. I mean, she's kind of like a, a local treasure down there. She was the beauty queen. She became the, the teacher, um, very popular. People loved her. And then when she went missing, this was like the, the biggest search, I think, at the time in the history of the state of Georgia for a missing person, trying to find Tara Grinstead. Um, but it goes back all the way to 2005. So you've got the passage of all this time. Um, does that, what impact does all this passage of time have and the fact that they have never found Tara? Well, we know, Vinny, there's, of course, she is a treasure. That's very well stated by you. I think the fact that she's never been found, we do have a lot of no body cases more and more. Uh, in the United States, uh, but when it hasn't been solved until recently, and she's been missing since 2005, and she's their treasure, I think to a certain extent that'll be held against the defendant, which is, you know, you basically, you know, there was a chance for this all to be resolved, you know, hide her body so well, etc. Or it could be go the other way, which is evidence is lost, witnesses forget things, what about the trace evidence, what about the changes in forensic science? since 2005 and what would be what would be available today so then you've got those kinds of problems on the other side with that kind of a lapse of time this, when i saw 2005 i thought that's been a long time ago i'd forgotten how old this really tragic case was that this small town treasure of a teacher a, a daughter um and a loved one absolutely then they had you know there was the up and vanished podcast which kind of put this back in the right. spotlight and soon after mm -hmm. People started talking. It happens. These cold right. cases can be solved. All right. When we come back.